Hey guys, and welcome to The Broken Sword. As I'm sure many of you know, Tolkien wrote about so many characters in his insanely vast legendarium. Some of them are important to the story, but have very little information or background on them. Because of this, there are loads of characters that we love, but have not covered in a video, so we thought it would be fun to chuck them all into one epic collection, rather than giving you a load of short two-minute videos. There are of course a few of these, so we thought it would be best to split it into heroes and villains. The villain video was released on the channel about 10 months ago. Now it's time for the heroes. Let's get into it. Haldir Haldir was an elf of Lothlorien. He guarded the forest's northern borders. When the Fellowship arrived in Lorien, he was their guide. In the Two Towers movie version, he is of course the elf that leads the elven army in the battle for Helm's Deep. As I'm sure most of you are aware, this did not occur in the books. But what else do we actually know about Haldir? After guiding the Fellowship to Karas Galadon, Haldir returned to his duties guarding the northern borders. But he returned when the Fellowship was about to depart to guide them to the banks of the Silverlode, where boats awaited them. Nothing further is actually known of Haldir's activities, though it's likely that he participated in the defence of Lothlorien when the forces of Dol Guldur attacked in March of 3019. Haldir was one of the few elves in Lorien who could speak Westron. He had clearly heard of Aragorn, but there is no indication that they had met previously. Again, in the movie, we see Haldir die in battle, but there is no mention of Haldir's death in any of Tolkien's writings. Beragond Beragond was a guard of the citadel in Minas Tirith serving the Third Company. He was a great admirer of Faramir, and likely also a good friend of his. When Peregrine Took, better known as Pippin, came to the city in March 3019, Beragond and his son Burgil served as his guides in Minas Tirith. During the Siege of Gondor, Beragond received news from Pippin that Denethor intended to kill both himself and the seemingly dead Faramir. Leaving his post, he fought the door guards of the place where Denethor had taken Faramir to in order to reach him until the arrival of Gandalf and Pippin, whereupon Faramir was saved. After protecting Faramir, he carried him to the Houses of Helin and stood guard over him until he awoke. Beragon travelled with Aragorn's army to the Black Gate of Mordor to challenge the forces of Sauron. They served under Prince Imrahil, and during the Battle of the Black Gate, Beragon was nearly killed by a troll. Then, after the War of the Ring, Beragond was brought before the newly crowned King Elisar to answer for the abandonment of his post, as well as the murders of those who stood in his way as he raced to rescue Faramir. Recognising that what he did was out of love for his lord, he did not impose the death penalty upon him. The newly crowned King's laws allowed for Beragond to simply be banished from Minas Tirith and live in Athelion to serve Faramir, for whom he had broken the laws to rescue. He was also promoted to the rank of Captain of the White Company. Gamlin A character very different to how he was portrayed in the movies, Gamlin was actually an old man during the War of the Ring, though he was still a commanding presence at the time of the Battle of the Hornburg. During the battle, Gamlin was the first to realise that orcs had penetrated the deep through its culvert, and he led the counter-attack himself. Gamlin seems to have been brought up in the western valleys of Rohan, and he understood the tongue of Dunland that was still spoken in some of those regions. When the Deepin Wall was taken, Gamlin was one of those that swept back into the Narrows. When the battle was over, Gamlin, Eomir, Gimli and others came forth from the caves. Damrod Damrod was a ranger of Athelion and one of Faramir's most trusted men. Along with his companion Mablon, he was part of a night patrol that captured Gollum in the Forbidden Pool. He also fought in the battle for Osgiliath and retreated to Minas Tirith with all of the surviving soldiers. A few days after this initial retreat, Damrod was sent with Faramir and his men to attempt to reclaim Osgiliath from the enemy. He was among the dead, attempting to fight a battle that was practically unwinnable. He was a very brave man, but one with little hope, for he believed the days of Gondor are numbered and the walls of Minas Tirith are doomed. Eristor Eristor was the chief counsellor of Elrond's household at the time of the War of the Ring. As such, he took part in the Council of Elrond. He did not support the idea of destroying the ring, and instead preferred the notion of guarding it from Sauron, perhaps even sending it to Tom Bombadil for protection. But this suggestion was soon countered by Glorfindel, as well as Galdor, as they didn't believe that Tom would have the power to defy Sauron's. After the War of the Ring, Aristor was among the party that accompanied Arwen to Minas Tirith for her wedding to Aragorn. They arrived in the city on Midsummer's Eve of 3019. 
It's not known whether Aristor left Middle-earth with Elrond in September of 3021, but it is most likely that he did leave eventually. Urkenbrand Urkenbrand was a man of Rohan and Lord of the Westfold during the War of the Ring. However, he was actually retired and settled in the Hornburg during the start of the war. But after the death of the king's son, Theodred, Urkenbrand took command of the western defences of Rohan. He defended the Westfold with around 1,000 men until he was actually summoned by Gandalf to aid the men at Helm's Deep. They arrived at dawn on March 4th and turned the tide of the Battle of the Hornburg. Urkenbrand did not come to Minas Tirith to fight in the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. Instead, he stayed behind to guard Rohan. He was granted this command because of his age, experience, and authority. After the War of the Ring, King Eomir named Urkenbrand Marshal of the Westmark. Hurin of the Keys As a captain of Gondor, he assisted Gandalf and Imrahil in directing the defences of Minas Tirith when the forces of Mordor besieged it. Later, once Theoden and the men of Rohan had arrived, Hurin joined Imrahil, Hurluin, and Forlong in riding out on horse with many other riders to aid the Rohirrim in the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. Although many, including Theoden, Hurluin, and Forlong, would fall in the battle, Hurin was among the survivors. Later, when Aragorn and Imrahil led the army of the West to challenge Sauron at the Black Gate, Hurin temporarily took on the title of Steward of the City as Faramir was still recovering from his encounter with the Witch King. Hurin was left with a small garrison of men from the city in order to defend its walls should Sauron decide to bring more Haradrim up from the south and assault it while the other captains rode towards Mordor. Nothing else is really known of Hurin after this point, though presumably he retained his position as Warden of the Keys within the city after Aragorn became king. So that's it for today's video guys, I really hope you enjoyed covering these lesser known heroes and have also checked out the lesser known villains on the channel. There are plenty more heroes and villains that we haven't covered, so if you would like a part 2 to either of these videos, be sure to let us know. Time has come, as always, to thank all our patrons and channel members. Your support means the absolute world to us and we couldn't do this without you. Another reminder to check out the Tabletop Alliance, which is now back in full swing after we built a brand new studio just for it. So if you're interested in Middle Earth Tabletop Gaming and other types of Tabletop Gaming, go over there and check it out. We've got so many big things planned. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword.